Hello YouTube. Uh, recently I was using my IKEA hobo stove and uh, I melted the aluminum cross braces that I had been using for the last, oh, maybe two years. Uh, I was a huge fan of these cross braces, but I've made some modifications in my hobo stove lately. Um, and it's gotten a lot of more uh, air circulation and it gets a lot hotter. And anyway, it melted my aluminum cross braces. And I was sad about this. And I, uh, I have some stainless steel uh, cross braces I made uh, a while back. Uh, here's the first version of it. It is <laughs> kind of crappy. As you can see, I messed up and had to uh, drill twice on each end to get it to line up. Uh, it's made out of like a metal ruler. And uh, it actually it works out great. It just I wasn't super happy with it, um, <laughs> but I have it as a backup. And um, I just recently, um, in the last day or so, made a new version um, and didn't mess up on it. Uh, and now it's my new cross brace for my hobo stove. But uh, yeah, you can see it works. It works out pretty well. I'm I'm, I'm happy with it. It's going to be my new cross brace. I'll carry around with my hobo stove. While I was thinking, though, I was like, what could I use as a cross brace if I didn't make, you know, it out of, like, aluminum or steel bars that I could put, you know, right on top of the hobo stove? So I got an idea. Uh, I thought maybe I would make a, a, a pot stand out of a tuna can. Um, I have this big, uh, big, basically a tuna can that's not quite the same uh, diameter uh, circumference there as the... Uh, the IKEA hobo stove, it'll fit, it would fit, you know, it would go in it, but I think there's a way to make it nest on top, and it could also be a makeshift grill plate as well. So, uh, it, my brainstorming has led me to this little DIY project that I'm calling the, uh, I don't know, tuna can hobo stove pot stand. <laughs> Catchy. Anyways, as you can see, it's made out of, uh, one of these tuna cans, these 12 ounce, I think the one I'm actually making is a 12 and a half ounce. You need a couple of things. You need uh, the can, tin snips, measuring tape, marker. You need a drill with a step bit. And of course you need some coffee. <laughs> you don't need the coffee. I just, I had the coffee because I was drinking coffee. Anyway, first thing you need to do is measure uh, around the the can that you're going to use. The circumference of the can. This one happens to be 12 and a half inches and uh, yeah I'm using empirical measurement uh, so not centimeters I'm, I'm measuring all this in inches here. Anyway so you have a point uh, all the way around and it's 12 and a half so six and a quarter is the halfway mark to get to the other side so exactly halfway around this can is, for this particular you know thing is six and a quarter. What, you, what we're aiming to do is, is find four points equal distance apart because um, that'll come into play here in a second. So if you, you know, break it down one more time, uh, it's just a little over three inches um, from, from one spot to the next spot. Anyway, you're going to mark, basically, you're going to measure and then mark uh, four equal distance spots all around the can. And this this twelve and a half inch can uh, breaks down to six and a quarter, and then three and uh, what is that? Two eighths, one eighth, something like that. Any, anyway, um, I did that. I marked all the spots and uh, measured it all out. And these are the base base measurements uh, that we're going to use. One, two, three, and four. All right. Now the next thing we're going to measure is the uh, up the height of the can. This is a, a little over two inches, so I'm going to measure one inch up from the the opening of the can. We're going to call that the bottom. For this, if you flip the can over, 
that's how it's it's going to nestle that way into the IKEA hobo stove. So one inch up. Actually, if it's two inches, <laughs> it'll be an inch down as well for this particular experiment. I didn't realize that until just now, uh, as I'm going back to kind of narrate this. Um, anyway, for every one of those four spots all around the uh, outside of the can, all you need to do is measure up uh, one inch. There you go and got all the way around. All right. I'm going to move my coffee off of my little work area here because I'm about to start drilling holes with the step bit and uh I don't want to get little uh tiny shards of metal in my coffee. So now what we're going to do is we're going to drill a bunch of holes. Um we're going to drill holes uh, between the places um, where we have the uh, the cross braces set up, um, the little cross brace areas are about an inch across, and then that leaves roughly two inches between each cross brace area. And you're going to put about a for my, for my purposes, I put a half inch hole. So I have four of these half inch holes, and each half inch hole is going to be between where the cross braces are. You'll see it here. It'll, as it takes shape, you're going to see. Here's the deal. It's important to put all these in before we cut the little parts that fold up. So you can see, for the structural integrity, I put in a bunch of holes while we still have the can fully intact. Uh, holes down next to those two, the two half-inch holes, and then smaller holes all along the top. And uh, this allows the heat to come up through it. Um, now we're going to put some holes right at the top. You can kind of see that I've scored where I want the holes to go with a nail. Uh, I did that uh, between shots of footage uh, so that my step my step bit would not slide all over the place. Uh, it's a little bit easier if you put a little indentation first. It'll, it'll hold the bit in place. And anyway, I'm going to make uh, five holes here on the top. Uh, this I'm affectionately calling the grill plate. So this the the pot that we're going to put on top of the hobo stove will sit directly on top of this here, uh, this bottom of the can, this this top, which was the bottom of the can. Yeah, see those little metal shavings. I didn't want to get any of that in my coffee and then accidentally drink it, so coffee had to move. So before I uh, take the tin snips and cut the parts that are going to hold the uh, the tuna can, you know, pot stand, you know, on top of the hobo stove. Uh, I had to do a, a fair amount of removing and kind of filing down the sharper parts on the inside. You don't have to do this. I just sort of do this every time I, every time I work with metal. I just don't like any little sharp parts to grab me at when I'm out camping, it will always do it. Sure enough, it will always do it. If, if there's a sharp part, it will catch me eventually. I just know it will. All right, so we're done drilling holes, and now we're going to cut. So as, I, as you remember, I said we, we put those, those one-inch measurements up to the middle of the can, four different spaces. And what I did is I put a dot about an inch away from each one of those uh, spots, so it leaves like a one inch area at four different places around the can. And you can see I'm using my tin snips to uh, cut that one inch up. And do this four different times all over the can. And after you start cutting up the side of the can like this, uh, it's not as easy to drill all the holes. Uh, it gives away too much. So drill the holes first before you do this part. You know, cut, cut, cut. Cut, cut, cut. All right. Tin snips. Done. All right. So we have these 
little tabs, these inch wide tabs. So let's bring our hobo stove in. Uh, and so if we fold out these little inch tabs on all four spots, as you can see, this is what holds it up. Sits in just like that. Uh, but uh, I didn't want it to blow around or, or be moved around or anything or fall off uh, balance. So what I did is uh, I folded it down in different places all around here. And then on the other side, you kind of just roughly fold it down first. I found uh, works out pretty well. And then you can go back and fix those little angles. So what I did not put on the list a little bit earlier was, you know, in the list of supplies you're going to need for this project was needle nose pliers. I found these are pretty handy for uh, bending the actual legs of the brace uh, so that the, the angles are sharper and it, uh, it holds it on top of the uh, hobo stove uh, a little bit more securely. It doesn't move around a bunch if you fold those down. Uh, just right uh, so they just fit right over the, the edge you know right over the lip so to speak um, all around the hobo spove so it should be pretty sturdy um, put it on top works like that the fire comes up through all the holes um, and uh, it just sits on top right there and you should be able to just set a pot um, you know or a pan or whatever just right on top and uh, that's my little Grundal <laughs> Ikea pot that I carry around with me. All right, so here we are in the field, so to speak. Uh, I went outside and uh, uh, found myself uh, a little area on the lake and uh, brought my Ikea hobo stove and all the little cook kit out here. And so we're going to try out this um, tuna can hobo stove pot stand DIY little little thing I carry my IKEA hobo stove in this little linen bag I think this is a fruit bag like you go to a, like a farmers market and you put fruit and stuff in it anyway I found it's pretty good keeps the soot off of everything in in, uh, in the, <laughs> the rest of the kit so here's why my hobo stove is burning so hot lately and I'm starting kind of getting used to it this bottom plate um, I recently made out of a, another piece of IKEA stuff that I'll go into in a different uh, video, but um, it just kind of screws on the the bottom of my IKEA stove here, my hobo stove. Uh, it nestles inside when I'm traveling with it, but when I get someplace, I kind of screw it on the bottom, and I screw it really loosely with a wing nut uh, just to hold it on, uh, you know, in case I pick the whole stove up and stuff. Eventually that wing nut will uh, get get so hot it'll break off, um, and I have some extras that I carry around with me. Um, and I don't screw it very tight because I don't want it to seize up on me. I want to be able to still unscrew it. So I only wrap it just a little bit, just a little bit. And, of course, there's the, the little plate, the little ash plate that I put at the bottom. Um, and because it burns so hot, it burns so hot because there's holes on that bottom uh, part that raises it up and there's holes in the bottom of the utensil holder and so now it's got a lot more airflow from the bottom that comes up and I think that's what melted my uh, my aluminum cross braces I was doing it in a windy area and uh, boy the the wind made it act like sort of a forge and boy it got really hot I also have learned that I <laughs> need to put down a piece of carbon felt and then also uh, a piece of metal um, to protect whatever surface I'm working on. I'm not so concerned with this concrete picnic table. It's mostly just out of etiquette. Um, I put it there. But anyway, that's that's how the hobo stove goes together. So I'm just using a piece of fat wood here and a, like a stormproof match. <laughs> I, 
I'm more concerned with the pot stand and how it works than uh, you know making a fire, so to speak. So I'm going the easy route. Um, <laughs> I love fat wood. I got to tell you, those two pieces there in uh, the bottom of the frame, those those are other pieces of fat wood, and you'll see me move them to the side here pretty soon because I'll save them for later. Uh, man, I, just, I love fat wood. That's my favorite way to start a fire. Uh, more than char cloth, more than than anything is just to set and fire to fat wood and watch the fat wood burn. Um, then I put in all these little little twigs. Uh, you can see there, uh, I've processed all this wood down so it'll fit in the hobo stove. Uh, that's like what I do in my downtime is uh, <laughs> in the back of my garage, I got whole boxes. I got cardboard boxes full of like five inch long <laughs> batoned pieces of hobo stove wood. Uh, enough that where my, my wife is probably a little bit concerned about me. Just boxes and boxes of this, you know, five inch pieces of wood. Anyway, you see that fat wood's going to work, man. It just, uh, it keeps burning. And as you put in more, uh, twigs and stuff, uh, the hobo stove gets cooking. Uh, in fact, as I'm using this hobo stove more and more, what I'm figuring out is, A, you do not need that much fuel to make a pretty roaring fire, uh, get up and cooking and uh b you do you, you just better if you do it in steps uh some people load a bunch of wood in all at one time and uh it just makes like a big bonfire right off the bat uh and if i'm just having it as a campfire i like it that way but if i'm going to cook on it i like it to uh to, to kind of grow to a size where i can get it back down to coals <laughs> or get it down under control and then i can just feed it as needed as i go along kind of temperamental these little hobo stoves um anyway there's a learning curve involved with them they, they they seem really simple but they 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 have a bunch of properties with them that you, you have to pay attention to anyway i put in this a uh, little bit wider wood this little bit bigger wood um i always have this pair of tongs with me every time i use a hobo stove uh, so i can handle the fire um anyway, i put all those little little sticks and they'll make pretty good coals when they they burn down um for cooking so I can you know heat heat up water but also if I want to cook something so this is just a boil test all I'm doing is boiling about two cups of water um, I've got a little Pathfinder pot right here um, it's probably the, one of the bigger kind of billy can kind of pots I have and what I'm gonna do is set it on top because uh, if it'll take this pot the stand will work for just about anything. A pretty nice day out here. It's the end of the summer here in Texas, and boy, it's pretty hot. It's pretty hot outside. I gotta tell you, it was like 96, 97 degrees um, while I was doing this. But there was a nice kind of, I guess, breeze coming off the lake um, from time to time, so that made it pleasant to be outside. But still, I, I just sweated balls the whole time. All right, so let's put this little pot stand to, to a test here. So all I'm doing is a boil test. Um, I didn't I didn't set a timer uh, because I wasn't uh, thinking. <laughs> I wasn't thinking ahead uh, as much as I should have for this video. Uh, oh, there you can see, man, the wind was blowing. Ever so often the breeze would come in. It would die back down, but... And see, this is a good test because that's like a forge. Like that wind, that consistent wind on the fire, uh, pushing it through there. I mean, it probably would have been nicer to have like a, like a windscreen. Um, anyway, uh, sometimes it would blow and blow and blow and it'd go through that wood and I'd have to kind of load it back up. I like having a side opening on my IKEA hobo stove just for this purpose. Just so I can load stuff from the side if there's something on top. Um but it went to it went to work on this um, this thing of water. Now I don't know if the, the the wind was affecting it and slowing it down, or if it's just the design of this particular pot stand. But uh, it took a while to boil a, a thing of water. I'm gonna say just as an estimate that it took over 15 minutes. Uh, I don't know, maybe 16 to 18 minutes. But eventually. Under 20 minutes. It's between 15 and 20 minutes, but I got a rolling boil, um, uh, and I didn't have to go through that much fuel to tell the truth. Um, so it did bring the water to a boil. It did it slower 
than like the uh, the steel or aluminum cross braces that I usually use. Um, but it worked. It worked. I mean, and because it has a flat surface on the top, you could probably, I, I mean, you could grill something like a like a little skewer of chicken or something on top of that, I guess, if you wanted to. It, it got pretty hot, uh, and it held up. It caught a lot of the soot on the underside of it, um, and it took a while for it to, to kind of cool down. There's the bottom of the pot. You can see the, the pattern of where the holes were from where the soot uh, came up you know, and, and sooted up the bottom of that, that Pathfinder pot. Uh, but boy, it stayed hot for a while. That little little plate stayed hot even after the, the fire died down in the hobo stove. So it was a successful test. So closing thoughts here about this little DIY uh, tuna can uh, hobo stove pot stand grill plate thing that I've made. Uh, first of all, as you can see, it's not super portable. It doesn't collapse down. Uh, it's mostly for <laughs> it's an idea that I had and I did. I'd put more holes in the top. I definitely would put more holes so more heat, more fire would come through the bottom. Um, I may put more holes around the outside. As much I'd put as many holes basically uh, on all the parts that are not used as the the legs to hold it on. You know, to 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 hold the weight. Everywhere else, I'd put a bunch of holes um, to for more so fire to circulate through. Anyway, that's why I'm posting this video actually because. I'm sure uh, the hive mind of YouTube can find ways to improve this particular design. Um, if anybody wants to try, uh, maybe make your own version and uh, you know let me know. I'd love to see how it works out. But that was my uh, that was my idea. Anyway, thanks for watching.